Hey everyone, welcome to Dev Dojo Academy. So it has been a long time since I uploaded uh, any video here to the channel because we have the same channel in Portuguese. And actually it's easier for me because I'm a native Portuguese speaker to record the courses in Portuguese. I'm trying to translate all the courses that we currently have, but it's quite difficult to voice over your own voice. Um, but this course is pretty interesting. I'm doing uh, in Portuguese now and I'm recording also in English and I would like to explain what we are trying to do. So this course is about Spring Boot microservices. More precisely, uh, Spring Boot Cloud. We will focus on the Netflix stack, but we are trying to talk about microservices uh, in general, not only uh, what is specific for the Netflix Cloud. Uh, in this course, we are going to follow an architecture because it's not like a, a course, it's more like a video tutorials. Uh, right now, I have uh, nine uh, videos that I am translating and these videos, they will follow the, the architecture that I'm going to show you here. So the, the goal of the, the tutorial, these nine videos, is to achieve what I'm going to show you here. So before we start, uh, we are going to talk about the architecture that usually most of the companies or a lot of companies they actually do when we are talking about microservices and I will tell you the difference uh, between what I'm showing you here and what we are going to do actually in our course because we have to at least keep it a bit more simple than what uh, usually big companies do well as you know uh, if you are working uh, with the back end you will probably have something that will have to be delivered to the front end to the client side uh, it doesn't matter if it's a web client, it doesn't matter if it's a native. You will always will have your client side. And when we are talking about microservices, we usually have a gateway. Why do we have a gateway? Because you will have several services. You don't know how many services you have. And the gateway, it is usually the single entry point for all the rest requests that we are going to use. So this is what we are going to do in our training. We are not going to create the client side, but we we will use the gateway. And the gateway that we are going to use since uh, is the Netflix uh, stack will be the Netflix Zool. So our gateway, it will be in one port and usually that's the only port that has access from outside. All the other ports that our microservices will be registered would probably be network blocked. So once we have several microservices, you can have different uh, microservices or you can have several instances of the same microservices you can scale that microservices as many times as you want so this is the microservice architecture and usually uh, the microservices they have their own database now this is what we are going to do differently here in our course what we are going to have is the gateway Netflix Zoom we will have one microservice and we will also have the authentication service as you can see here, each one of these microservices, they have uh, different databases, but for this course, we are going to use the same database. So we will create one microservice for the authentication, another microservice for the, just uh, to use as an example. And both of them will connect to the same database, but we will have at least two microservices, three microservices, including the gateway. So when you have microservices, you will have uh, also the service discovery. Why? Because you have several microservices being created or being automatically scaled and you have no idea where these microservices are and it's impossible to keep track of all of them. That's why you need a service discovery. We are going to talk about it uh, in a few slides, but right now what you have to understand is that the gateway, it will fetch all the services available on the service discovery. So once you make a request from the client side, the gate will fetch and it will decide for which microservice it will send. Here, as you can see on this line, we call this DMZ zone, the militarized zone, and usually this is network protected. It means that if the client side tries to access directly each one of these services, trying to connect through the port, imagine that service one is running on localhost port 80, 8085. And if the client side tries to make a request localhost 8085 slash service one, it should be blocked. The only way with microservices to get the request uh, to the services is going through the gateway, router and filter gateway. 
Now let's talk a bit about the service discovery. The service discovery, uh, in this case, we are going to use Eureka because of the Netflix cloud. It will have all the microservices. Once you have all the microservices there, you can fetch the registry. You can open a page. They have a dashboard where you will see something like this. Each one of the microservices will have the status. It's uh, up or down. And if you have more than one instance, in this case, service one right here, you will have two or the number of instances that is running for that same microservice. Now, of course, the gateway is a microservice and it will also be registered in the service discovery server. Well, if we're talking about microservices, we have to talk about security. And this uh, is where things will get interesting. When we have this architecture, client side, gateway authentication service, and several other microservices, it's better, in my opinion, um, some people may disagree, to have everything stateless. And if we are working with stateless session, actually we have no session at all, we need the information available to the services. And one way to do that is using tokens, TWT tokens. But we are going to make this uh, tutorial a little bit more complicated and funnier, actually. Um, the first request that the client side, this is actually what our tutorial is going to do. You are going to make a request from the client side. In your case, we will use uh, Postman through the gateway. The gateway will call the authentication service. This is the login request. Then the authentication service will answer with JWE token. So J this uh, JWE token is the JSON web encryption. It means that our token will be completely uh, encrypted. You know, there are several tutorials on the internet, but usually they do not encrypt the token. And why are we encrypting this token? Because once the gateway returns this token to the client side, the token will be stored there. And why are we storing? for subsequent requests to any of the microservices or the microservices that we currently have. So now that we are logged in and the client side has the, the token, what we can do is make a request. Now, this is where it will get even more interesting. Once we make a request to the gateway, as you can see, we have the token encrypted. The gateway then will have to send the token to the services. Why? Because the token contains all the information, what we call claims, that will tell who is making that request. Now, we have two options here. The first option is uh, sending the token encrypted to the services. The services, all the services that we have, they will have to validate the token, they will have to decrypt the token and validate the signature. Because when we talk about uh, token encrypted, GWE, it is actually a token that's signed. It means that you have a signature that will make sure that all the claims, everything on the payload is exactly uh, the same way you are getting, the same way when uh, it was created. So the DWE is signed and then encrypted. So all the services, if you decided to go with the JWE right here, they will have to decrypt the token, validate the signature of the token. Or we have another option and we'll have this uh, configurable instead of sending the JWE token, we are going to send only the JWS. This means JSON web signed. It means that the services, they will only have to check the signature. By checking the signature, it means that between uh, the moment of creation and the moment that you are receiving that token, nobody was able to open the token and change the, the payload that you have inside. For example, changing the roles. So we have these two options. We will make it configurable um more about uh, performance issues because when you have something encrypted you have to decrypt and this can take uh, a little bit of your performance down so for all the services it will do exactly the same thing you will have to send the token and the services will have to validate the signature or decrypt the sorry decrypt it or and validate the signature so this is uh, what we are going to do. Uh, the, uh, the videos are a bit long. You will have access to the GitHub repo. The videos will be in separate branches. So for example, uh, actually the first two videos, they are in one 
single branch. Actually, I think I merged it by mistake. But from video number three onwards, you have access to all videos in separate branch. So if you are watching video video three, you can just uh, check out that same branch and you will have access to that same code. I think it's a bit easier to follow that way. But if you have the chance to just watch and do the, the same way you do, uh, I would appreciate that. So this is what I'm planning to do. Please uh, leave your feedback about what you think about this architecture and let's code, you guys.